afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, another glorious propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a two versus two. Yes, indeed. Bit of a slightly shorter one, bordering on the point where I wouldn't actually cast it, but still thought it was interesting. And still, you know, some people do like two versus twos, and I like a good one, just as I tried to say and keep saying, it's just a bit hard to find a good one. But this one was interesting, so let's go have a look. We watch, shall be watching Sturm Tigerost and Soul Hill Street Blows fighting for the Wehrmacht, taking on the fight for the... Oh, I don't know. Second Panzer Division opposing them shall be Zero Flames and Thanks Kill Me. What a lovely name right there. Lovely, optimistic, cheerful, wondrous name. Fighting... More of a combined allied task force again. You didn't really see the Brits and Americans fight together like that, so it'll just be some nondescript force, I'm afraid. And already there, we are seeing a bit of communication between the axes, pointing out which doctrine will be chosen. That is good. That is good. I have heard some rumor about actually in Camarillos 2 there will be some sort of indicator for teammates so they don't have to ask each other what doctrine they've actually gone. So that would be nice if that turned out to be true. We are seeing an infantry section hanging up the right hand side. We are seeing a lieutenant. We are seeing a headquarters command track probably going to hit for that fuel point. That is very usually where the bits go. That might advance up. MG42 first. Bit dangerous. He was probably hoping to ambush it. Otherwise, I mean, he could have risked getting ambushed. Pioneers pushing in against the recce section. Americans pushing up the left side with some riflemen. Bike and MG from the both Wehrmacht players, in fact, so they're more of a slight initial containment attempt right there. Pioneers have rushed into the house to deny it to the Commonwealth, to the British. In the meanwhile, the Americans are finding a bit of Pioneers over the west side. MG 42 moving up. In the meanwhile, the recce section is getting hunted down by Pioneers. And now the bike adding in with the MG 42, the lieutenant pulling a bit back. They will need some additional firepower, although the bike could actually find himself all of a sudden overwhelmed by the recce section and perhaps the lieutenant if he adds in a few Sten gun shots as well. In the north, fighting continues to arrive and have to cure a position in the old barn. The really old and wrecked barn. Although so far they aren't really doing much with it. Although they could actually ambush the rear position of the Germans as the MD42 switching off. Why going down to protect one flank? Another interdiction out. MD42 firing down upon the British troops, but the bike could get lost. Pioneers jump out of the house and just quickly just pull out the blow torch and just begin welding things together at random at risk of actually welding one of the soldiers to the bike. Infantry section pushes up though, awards the MD fire. Casual team station up, that could actually mean a bit of impetus for the Commonwealth player if Hill Street Blues kills too much with the MG too close to it. Rifleman keep pushing up, Rifleman holding up the bike. More forces moving up, going to harass the rear length sections of the Germans. Fosco squad going to attack the barn, taking up a nice position by the storm wall. Nicely done there by Sturm Tiger. The Tiger the Sturm. Something interesting continues to be. Suppressed another MG42 has arrived from Hill Street Blues, clearly representing a heavy company rather than a regular one or heavy platoon, whatever. Folks, guys, actually getting pushed back as another rifle squad joins the fray, but the MG42 is shifting north to provide fire support. Another Folks, guys, squad arrived for Sturm Tigerost. Rifle now aiding and looks like a full assault is going to be initiated against Hill Street Blues positions. MG is pushed away. Very little to actually hold the flank, and one part of his force, in fact, collapses. Fighting continues here. Fulskers are suffering a bit. The rifle are moving in, trying to flank around the position. MG42, they will be able to react nicely due to advanced infant warning from the infantry, which is why you usually have infantry in front of your MGs. Grenade from. Thanks, kill me, does not quite work. And what was meant to be a large flank actually turns out to be very painful for him. And looks like he might actually have lost a rifleman squad. He actually only started out with two. Oh, you're not really good for thanks, Kilmy. I think he's being a bit too incautious. Oh wait, no man, there's also one on me, but still, he lost the one in the barn. Not good at all. I mean, I can see why he might have gone for it, but again, he was not quite able to protect it. 
And that grenade f f failed, so obviously didn't get much out of that. And he's already taking up, hopefully, now trying to recover f the infantry losses through a tech advantage, perhaps. Raven here taking a beating, getting sniped, and geed, and f just burned. Grenade on the pioneers, kills the squad, though, so minor victory there for the fatherland. And let's go look at Hill, Hill Street Blues. Brenko charges forward. F it's. Well, it's filled with infantry section troops. MG setting about. Hill Street Blues trying to continue. He's actually got an infantry squad now. And we are, in fact. Oh, trying to hunt down the sniper! Will the Bren carrier and its plucky crew succeed in their task to kill the Hun? The Jerry. Bike is pushing in. Bren gun firing away. Infantry section firing away. Sniper very close to death. Bleeding profusely, and there we go. He spotted, and it's a recce section. It spots the sniper. Will it get him? Will it execute the damn crap bastard? At the same time, we are seeing Hill Street Blues taking up. Infantry takes it, and there we go. Sniper is dead. Line up against the bunker wall and executed like the rat he is. In the meanwhile, the brand carrier is trying to pull off an escape, but it's already heavily damaged. It will probably try and take this more. Covered path to escape the bike. Oh no, damaged engine. The engine is damaged. I'm sorry, Jerry, you won't make it back home, nor will Robert, right next to you. Jeep now out for thanks. Kill me, a bit curious. Storm T goes to fortifying this position with additional bar wire. Lovely done. It looks like the Bren carry actually is going to make it, so I was wrong. Well, there you go. Can happen. Bren section up here, not entirely sure why Zero Flames sent it over there. Tank taps more about wire. Sturm Ghost really, you know, fortifying his part of the map. Motorpool is up for thanks. Kill me. Pig bags are going up for Hill Street Blues. And the recce section finds itself run off. Fultica's coming under fire, Raffin pushing in, Bren can't really support him, but we're seeing Blitzkrieg grenades up for Storm T Ghost. Right on the rifleman, one grenade, two grenade, concussive grenades just delivering damage and confusion. Rifleman squad almost down, and they're going to get forced to retreat. Thanks, kill me, unit preservation once more seems to fail him. And another rifleman squad bites the dust, and another Blitzkrieg assault, more grenades. Lots of grenades going left and right. Lots of units dying, but primarily the Americans are just the ones getting murdered by all of these grenades, these assault grenades. Medics doing what they can to recover the wounded. Engineer squad pushed away by a single bike. Does the job heroically. Bren carrier sallies forth once more. Now with a Bren in Bren movement, which is what you know, what is the when having a Bren section in the Bren carrier is colloquially called the Bren in Bren could also call it the Super Bren, and no, we're probably not. And we're actually seeing a buff force going up for Sir Flames. I might have figured a Stuart Light tank would initially actually work out for him quite nicely. Panzerfaust on the Bren carrier. Fultzler is right here, though. Should be careful. Hill Street's Blues infantry is rather worn down. Pack on the way. Grenadier squad following up, and a Pioneer squad bites the dust. Buffos almost ready. The Buffos, a Swedish anti-aircraft gun, which is actually used not just by the British, but also by the Americans, and in fact by the Finns, and I also believe some of the other Axis nations, I believe Romania and Hungary, in fact, they even used an anti-aircraft tank variant of it, called the, well, the Landsberg II, or the Hungarian version, which they had slightly modified, which is called the Nimrod, the Great Hunter. Folks, are still continuing in. The Greyhound, though, Thanks, kill me. Seems to have flushed it a bit too incautiously, and he risks, yes, death by Panzerfaust. He needs to be careful in these cases. I mean, the movement was right in theory, but he should not advance further in once the Panzerfaust got too close. Looks like the bike could go down for Storm TGOS, but he still has the advantage. Rival has to close in through the gaps since they can't see cover, and a mine goes off. And another rifleman squad just gets executed. Thanks, kill me is getting murdered, pummeled. It's unbelievable. And so far, it's the British player doing most of the work. The Bren in Bren combination continues to just inflict casualties like nothing else on the Germans. 
now just firing into the sides of the pack crew. Panzer Shrek though connects the Bren carrier crew. Well, the Bren section could fight on from behind and clear out the pack, perhaps. But no, a Panzer Shrek gets one of them. They need to get out of there. But no, they're still on a mission. Never mind then. The mission has been cancelled. Mortar emplacement also up for Zero Flames. A bit too close there. Could make it a bit too tempting to call into artillery there of some sort, but nonetheless. Otherwise, I suppose, in theory, a nice position. With the buffers, the ak ak, as the British call there. Anti aircraft guns in slang. It's actually time to have a look at Zero Flames. No doctrine for him. No Stuart Light Tank either. We're actually seeing an armored command track, so that should actually make up for that. And he actually over repaired his emplacements. That's actually a pretty nice move. I mean, rarely you see that, but Sappers can with the repair kit actually over repair vehicles and, in fact, emplacements, apparently, which means they actually have more health than when they were built. Could be either he's saying, for fuck's sake, son, or he's saying, firestorm soon. And another armored car rolls out for thanks. Kill me. There's a pack over there being sent over. Panzer Shrek Grenadiers, a nice force from the second Panzer Division. Greyhound already takes a connecting hit. I think thanks, Kill me should consider reevaluating his tactics. I mean, he's taking too many losses to sort of really f perform independent operations. I think he should shift over to providing support for Zero Flames, more limited one. And supporting his attacks in Zero Flames. Seems to be the one doing the bad time. There we go, another armored car is down. I mean, thanks, Kill me's just getting absolutely murdered every single time he moves out his own. I mean, he should just, you know, provide some infantry support for the assaults of Zero Flames. Perhaps his armored cars provide support for the tanks and so on. Mine's going down for Zero Flames. He's trying to cover up his flanks, his avenues of approach. That's actually good. Thanks, kill me, continuing to run into trouble. Anti-tank gun out. And we're actually seeing Royal Canadian that's already chosen. This could be the fourth Canadian Infantry Division providing some support for the Americans. Sappers though getting absolutely pummeled by the MG crew. Well probably more likely the fourth Canadian receiving American support. Either way, Sappers on the run. Mortar rounds going down. German mortar fire going in from Hill Street Blues. The Kanatenwerfer unleashing German mortary death. No resources yet for a tank. Could have been a Cromwell though, but looks like he might actually go for something. And a 25 pounder gun for Zero Flames. German assault lining up. MG providing support for the Grenadiers as they creep up the street. And there we go. Poor force opens up. Actually, f does not do so well in the first barrage. And a firestorm gets called in. Probably from Hill Street Blues. And of course, the other chap has gone Blitzkrieg. Sturm he goes. And the firestorm devastates it. Infantry support is needed immediately. And looks like the emplacement will go down. Fulker's court moving up on the flank. Hits a mine. Mortar rounds doing what they can. Sappers are needed to perhaps repair. Never mind the mortar emplacement is gone. MG suppresses the advancing Bretons or Canadians or whatever. Commonwealthians. And assault grenades on the retreating Brits just unleashing more death and glory as mortars rain in on the same spot as well. And another assault going in. Veterans you want for Sturm T Ghost Infantry. And just on the British positions all clustered up. And an infantry action actually gets reformed. And the 25-pounder gun is ready. Unleashing artillery unlike no other. Probably firing against actually the mortar. Talk about counter-artillery. And the mortar crew desperately trying to unpack their mortar and get it moving again. Uh, well, evapor... evapor... Blah. Killed. Yeah, I was trying to get too fancy with the words and my tongue failed me. There you go. Advancing straight into an MG and it's do believe it's time for the mid-game analysis. 
Again, yes, a bit of a shorter match, but again, I do know some people like two versus two, so I do try, but again, it's so hard to find a good one. Current situation is a bit pressured for the Brits, I mean, partly due to thanks kill me, rather having trouble in doing anything without just getting absolutely murdered. And it is a bit hard, I mean, the movement's alright, but again, he does seem to get a bit, you know, every time overreaching a bit and then getting something killed. He spreads his troops out too thinly and doesn't actually think about the retreat path. Apparently, and you have to think about, you know, what happens if I have to retreat, and he doesn't seem to do. It's actually an important skill. On the other hand, Zero Flames doing much, much better. He's actually doing quite a bit of damage, and he's definitely also now where all the Germans are focusing, partly also due to his more advanced position. Hopefully with Zerama on the way and the tank destroyer now actually out for the American player, he might be able to lay down some pressure on the Germans, but they need to clear out some of the positions here. They need to cripple either of the Germans so they can get some breathing space. They might also want to consider recruiting that mortar and turning against the German foes. Medic bunker up here is actually a nice move by Hill Street Blues. I'm not convinced Royal Canadian Tony might have been the best move, but there you go. He could have perhaps gone for commandos to drop some surprises on the Krauts. And actually, note he's constantly over-repairing with his sappers. I mean, that's dedication. That's, you know, doing things by the book. And again, it's rather rare you see a player actually using it. And even rare they actually see use on emplacements and buildings. But the men are ready when you are. All good for him, I'd say. Still holding on to the victory points, but that seems to be largely it. But thanks, Kill Me needs to consider things, and again, I think he just needs to sort of shift over to providing more support for Cyril Flames instead of moving in on his own. For the Germans, I mean, they're all right, and looks like... Oh, Storm Tier Ghost actually just held up with the Tier 1 and went straight for the Panzer Command Ospin at first. That could certainly do something. The Germans... Hill Street Blues got a more solid infantry force. And they basically just need to clear out the Brits and, well... Then that's it. I mean, the American player will pretty much fall apart. So, let's return and let's go have a look at Thanks Kill Me. And advancing a bit too much in a clump, getting suppressed. Although, Artillery Fire going in against the MG42. The MG42 crew jumping out of the window, barely makes it out, and then pulls a full retreat. MG, oh, Recce section moving in, going to recruit it, nicely done, nicely done. Stealing the weapon under the hands of the ner nose of the hands, not the other way around. Can curse you. Tongue. And again reporting that as a firestorm. So clearly nice coordination from the Axis players. Very nice. Rifleman getting suppressed. Rifleman more on the way. Tank destroyer doing what it can on the far flank. Should probably have been a Sherman instead of a better chance of doing some damage against infantry. And Austrian pulling up on the far flank. Storm T Ghost going forward. Anti tank needs to turn about. No, no, no. Turning the wrong way. And we're seeing Blitzkrieg. He's actually ordering his Austrian to just fire away. And a firestorm gets called in on the British positions. That could this could be absolutely devastating. We do see the Brits spreading out, but some of them are not quite making. The MG goes down. Ostwin gets the 25 pounder gun with assistance from the Firestorm and might even clip. There we go. Sorting out the anti tank gun crew. Getting buttoned. Sappers are providing support nearby. And there we go. Recruiting the anti tank gun as well. But they actually can't seem to get to it. But there we go. And scores a kill, knocking out the Austrian flak panzer at the same time a panzer comes back and four rolls out. Another tank destroyer running for thanks kill me, which rather means he obviously lost the other one. And thanks kill me. Oh dear, more grenades. Again, he ought to be supporting his British team there. Team plate. Ping player blah. Not entirely sure what's happening and going wrong here for me today. But at least I hope you're enjoying my verbal mistakes at the very least. Leave one rocket action out for Hill Street Blues. That could definitely be very devastating. That's probably going to be reserved for the British positions. 
MG wants more recruit needs to be put up in a slightly more advanced position I believe to rather do something nasty against the Germans Panzer for advances getting pieted tank to drop Cromwell up for zero flames Grenadiers getting blasted and a Grenadier squad actually goes down to the Cromwell on retreat a high explosive round tears them to bits British infantry continues fighting but it is not looking good and Germans are breaking through the entire western flank which is completely collapsed due to again thanks Kilmy's considerable losses and he is taking losses but nonetheless they keep pushing on more to recruit by what looks like some false grenadiers and there we go the false guns are once more on the retreat anti-tank and getting repaired MG42 still in the base. I think again it should be moving forward to put some pressure on the Germans. And tank destroyer doctrine four. Thanks, Kilman. He's even going for the right hand side. Again, I don't think they need calliopes. I think they need some thing a bit more solid. And there we go, V1 rocket going in. We are seeing heroic charge going up, going to heroically charge away from the V1, a real Sir Robin, Robin manoeuvre, and there we go. Bravely went the other way. Cromwell taking several hits, and at this stage it's not looking good for the Allies. And again, I think he can largely be laid down to the feet of thanks, kill me. And his assistance on tank destroyers, and again, they're not tanks. Yet he seems to keep thinking they are. There we go, folks, guys. And now Ritterkreuzträger moving up. Going to unleash the Panzerfaust. The Panzerfaust, which are actually several variants. There was even one that was sort of made to actually fire several rockets, that is, it could be reloaded. Which is actually quite interesting. But they were easy to make, easy to produce, although they had a tendency of dining a bit up and you actually had to be very careful about them. Enemy unit down. And the American commander continues to take heavy casualties. Let's return to Hill Street Blues. British players holding up, but not very well. He is suffering the brunt of the abuse. Thanks, kill me. Clearly, not quite having any success in pulling his own weight. I mean, I know Sturm Tigost and is definitely a, a very good Wehrmacht player, and so is the British player. In fact, so, I mean, it's not like it's a novice fight, but it is a bit odd that Thanks, kill me does seem to be performing so poorly. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on. And the Knights, of course, get the sniper. No surprise there. Brits are charging forward to another section of fall. And Blitzkrieg assault. Two Knights cross squads. One moving in with the assault rifle while the other lobs in grenades. And just stunning the entire force. Grenades going in, causing huge wounds and casualties, even damaging their own troops. And there we go. The Knights cross are just turning through it all. One Knights cross squad goes down to the Bren guns. And another goes down. The Volkswagen are pushing up. A bit risky there by Sturm Tiger Ost, but Zero Flames keeps fighting. And Firestorm goes in on the British positions. Veterans to two Lieutenant, by the way, that's very nice. MD42 sets up a Firestorm rockets land in, getting both medics. And oh dear, the Fulkers recruit the anti tank and just in time to clear out a flanking M10 and actually ensure that he couldn't flank that was very bold that every Volkswagen though died so that was definitely a heroic death and for the fatherland they shall be remembered as heroes pack on the right flank Volkswagen are going to be as veterans advancing and we're seeing rockets a Stuka Sufus I believe is up where it is up I can't see 
Oh, there we go. And the British player has been absolutely mauled. Not looking good. Not looking good at all. German infantry continues to make their way forward as the British are forced to fall back. Under heavy artillery fire, mortar and rocket. Two tank destroyers now rolling out for thanks, kill me. Third on the way. And we're actually seeing Blitzkrieg up for the Panzer IV, increasing its speed, increasing its rate of fire. It's actually taking on the tank destroyers. A very bold move. Could actually get one of the tank destroyers. And there we go, the Panzer IV heroically gets one tank destroyer, but ultimately it looks like it might get overwhelmed. Fighting continues down here with Germans suffering some losses. And the Panzer IV veers out of control. Crashing into an old shed. Fighting continues down south. The Grenadiers continue to lay in rockets. Although the house they are currently occupying is close to collapse. And another firestorm. And it just falls into the trench. Murdering every Brit in it more or less. Except for two unfortunate bastards. Who pretty much get executed as they escape. And another Brit dies as he heroically ma Our opponent has 200 points. Fighting continues. Fraps continues to act up. Come on, Fraps. Panther now on let loose from Sturm Tegerust. Panther Kampfwagen 5. Right from sneaking about in the center. Cromwell command tank pulling out. The Cromwell having a dummy gun. Probably to ensure there were more room for other things inside the tank. The Germans, on the other hand, didn't really believe in dummy guns. So basically their command tanks had more radio equipment, but still also functioned like an otherwise regular tank. So fun little fact there. More artillery. In this case, the mortar. And now we do see a Calibri out for thanks, kill me. But question is, again, if a... Pershing would have been more beneficial. More on the way from the armoured command truck. Bangor's going down to fortify the right flank. An American anti-tank gun. Uh, barely sustainable in the centre. And there we go. The Calliope unleashes its payload. Looks like some more is on the way for Sturm Tigerust. A second Panther. And Veterans is on the way for the Panther as well. Crumble up, but largely game over by the looks of it. The British have completely collapsed, more or less. They've got some armour, and thanks, Kilney is not really improving. Fosco's getting the drop on the British MG42. Quickly getting out of the range of the nearby Cromwell tank, advancing. Mortar rounds, though, clear out the MG in the building. And Cromwell takes a direct hit, and there we go, Veterans do up for the Panthers, adding some MG gunners. Mind you, these MGs, but of course, while useful against infantry, were also meant as anti aircraft defense weapons. They were obviously not perhaps the most effective weapons in particular later stages of the war. And rather than advancing, are taking quite a few hits there. And the half tech unleashes another set of rockets as well. Ready, 
And the Rifleman are just getting murdered by the advancing Panthers. And there we go, Zero Flames realizing the fight is lost. Calls for retreat. While Thanks Kill Me seems to continue fighting, and there we go. Blitzkrieg is up, increasing the rate of fine speed of the Panthers. Of course, this also the same for infantry, in fact, allowing infantry to sprint. And there we go, 1M10 already. And there we go, 1M10 quickly decommissioned, even 2M10s with against Blitzkrieg Panthers can't do that much damage. And the second M10 going to get knocked out very quickly as well, and there we go, out of control. Crumb blasted as well. And this is pretty much a collapse. Just speeding up before Fraps is high, and there we go, game over. A loss to the Allied forces. Bit of a shorter match, a bit shorter than the normal I'd like, but again, there has been a demand for two versus twos. And I suppose I had to provide in some ways without getting ourselves a fight with sniper spam or something else not very exciting. So, overall, I mean, yes, shorts, and definitely, I mean, thanks, kill me, needs to bloody well improve. That was, in some ways, not very good. I um, can't, of course, fully say what sort of mistake, why he made mistakes he did, but there was some, definitely some problems there with the armored cars, and again, he was basically rushing ahead without having a clear path of retreat, and losing a lot of units. And again, you need to also ensure you have a clear path of retreat, which again is not something everybody does. The British player did alright, but again, he was ultimately overwhelmed due to the problems of his player. From the Wehrmacht, I mean, we saw good coordination, good tactics, good support. Bit bold taking up to tier 4 from tier 1, but I mean the other player certainly had it in hand, but again, had thanks kill me, been a stronger player, it could vary much very differently, and that's the problem. Storm Tigers only got away with what he did because thanks kill me, you know, basically fumbled <laughs> severely. But good use of assault grenades, good use of Blitzkrieg, it's rare you actually see a player use the Blitzkrieg ability, so that's actually nice. Interesting use of zero, well, zero flames or whatever, you know, use of over-repairing emplacements and such. And overall, I mean, I hope you enjoyed this match, hope you learned something from it. If you did, want to subscribe, tell your friends, share. If you didn't, well, you know, why not send in a replay of your own or provide some feedback in the comments. What did you like, what didn't you like? What did you think was the highlight of this match? But <coughs> this is Imperial Dane saying cheers and feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter.